Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Y'all know the surroundings, so you know what this means. It can mean one of two things. A, this lazy son of a gun is about to react to another Nintendo Direct. And number two, well, actually there is no number two this time. So let's dive straight into this. Pokemon Gen 8 has officially been revealed. It's coming up on two years from the official announcement that they were working on a new gen of Pokemon. Like, like we wouldn't get another installment in this pretty much annual franchise. <laughs> we got confirmation that Pokemon will indeed be headed to the Nintendo Switch again this fall with Pokemon Sun 2 and Pokemon Moon 2. Wait a minute, scratch that. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. I'm sorry, y'all. It was just a slip of the tongue, you know? Wait a second. I don't really think it was a slip of the tongue. Because I could have sworn we were on the Nintendo Switch and not the 3DS. But more on that later. Now, y'all know I'm not the biggest Pokemon fan out there. I appreciate the series as a whole and what it means to me growing up playing through all the games. But I wouldn't go so far as to say that I am a competitive player. I just don't have the time and energy to invest in Pokemon like I used to. The last time I really played a Pokemon game like that was... Hmm, i say Pokemon Black 2. And that was a minute ago. Because correct me if I'm wrong, they came out on the DS. I did pick up Pokemon X. Actually, no, I picked up Pokemon Y. And <laughs> still haven't completed it to this day. Now, you could say that's probably due to the quality of the game, but I will go so far as to say that I just don't finish games. If it's not that interesting to me, I ain't going to complete it. So, <laughs> here we are. I'm not going to be coming at y'all from a critical Pokemon fan point of view. I'm not going to sit here and critique the differences or lack thereof. I'm just looking at this as a game and how it compares to the other games on the Switch. Have I mentioned how much I love the Switch? Because I do. And I'll be damned if we are coming into a new gen of Pokemon in 2019 and the latest installment looks literally no different than a 3DS game. Literally. Like, we have this big gap, this huge, huge jump in power from the 3DS that came out in 2011 to the Switch that came out in 2017. We've seen what the Switch is capable of pulling off. And all we get is this. Now, I will say, it does look leaps and bounds better than Let's Go Casual Volume 1 and Let's Go Casual Volume 2, but that's not saying much. You set the bar so low, and it's basically like anything above it is going to be better by comparison. There are some things that look pretty cool, though. I will say, like, the, the design aesthetic attached to it, albeit a lot of the things look really <laughs> low res, and they look like they ripped them straight from the 3DS, but I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt considering things can change in a few months. Maybe when they do a proper re-reveal at E3, it'll look better. But then again, this game does come out at the end of the year. And if you look at Pokemon X and Y and Sun and Moon, they really didn't change from their announcement to their final form. Final form. What is this? Frieza from Dragon Ball Z? Jesus! But yeah, the trailer really didn't show off too much. I mean... It was kind of a teaser when you think about it. But nothing in there really excited me to the point where I'm just like, yeah, Gen 8, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah. Ooh, I'm, I'm going to need to get that. Clear my entire schedule. It's Pokemon season. Eh. But at the same time, y'all, I don't really mind it. You want to know why? Because y'all let Game Freak get away with this year after year after year after year. Game Freak is very complicit in giving you guys the bare minimum and nothing more. Why? Because Pokemon keeps breaking records. Each and every installment does better than the last one. Despite the criticism, despite the backlash from a very vocal minority. And so, what does that say to Game Freak? You know? It says that I need to keep this thing in focus. Thank you, phone. It says like, hey, you know, it doesn't really matter what we do. We can just churn out each installment. And provided we give you what you expect, that's it. Now, they have experimented with a few of the games here and there. Some have had better stories than others. Some of them have gone away with the traditional style completely, like with Pokemon Sun and Moon. And, you know, it's been to mixed results. Some people like it. Some people don't like it. Some people think they bastardized the franchise when they did that. I'm in the camp that, hey, I'm glad that they're making some changes. 
even Pokemon Let's Go incorporated some changes that I enjoyed. I really did like the fact that they got rid of wild encounters. At first, I was just like, no, man, it just takes away the fun of finding a cool Pokemon. But realistically, when you think about it, that makes a lot of sense because you can avoid all of those random encounters. It's like at first when we were playing JRPGs and we got all those wild encounters and they transitioned them into seeing the enemies on screen on the map. That was pretty cool. So this looks like they're incorporating some of the things from Let's Go, but they're keeping it more traditional. Now, whether that means they're keeping it 100% traditional and not changing things remains to be seen. Maybe they could wow us, and this game is actually deeper than we all originally anticipated. I don't know, because this is literally just that, a teaser trailer. So I know a lot of you guys expect me to come on here and rant about the game and say it's going to be horrible, it's going to be horrific, you know, what's going on with these Pokemon designs. Number one, I just don't got the energy to do that anymore. Maybe a 2011 version of Neo could have done that. But if it's still a good Pokemon experience, I think it's going to sell. And, and look at the Switch. The Switch is still selling like crazy. And that's that's not a defense to Game Freak's lack of creativity and originality. I do think we should have gotten the, the Breath of the Wild Super Mario Odyssey shakeup. No, that doesn't mean I needed to be 100% open world. But at the same time... People are just going to buy it anyway. They're going to buy it anyway because it's Pokemon and Game Freak is going to learn nothing. They're going to learn nothing. Why? Because it's selling 15 million copies. And y'all who are complaining still buy it every single time. You finish it within a day and then you go on Twitter to complain. Will I buy the game? I don't know. I don't know, to be honest. Pokemon ain't really my jam like that. But to the same degree... I'm not going to sit here and write it off until I see more. Anyways, that's all I got to say about Pokemon today. I will be doing another Pokemon video, though. A reaction to the new Detective Pikachu trailer, which was freaking crazy. That movie just came out of nowhere under the radar. I'm, I'm so surprised about it. It's one of my most anticipated movies for the year, surprisingly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Pokemon Gen 8. Yay. Nay. Have any of y'all bought Final Fantasy IX on the Switch? Y'all probably did. It's number one on the store. <laughs> Not to toot its own horn, man. I'm just saying. Best Final Fantasy next to six. Speaking of six, can six get a port? Can Taxes get a port? These are the questions that we need answered, Square Enix. But we won't be answering them today. Because we are talking about Pokemon. And it's lack of creativity. Yet it somehow still sells. For me to you for now, my name is NGS signing out. And like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace. I'm going to go see Battle Angel Alita tonight with my girl. It's a review coming probably within the next 16 years. Definitely before it gets a sequel, unfortunately. Catch you guys later.